Guys, welcome back to Insanely Chill. It's me, Cody. This is uh, episode 29, baby. We're almost at 30. The dirty 30, as people like to call it. I like to call it the squirty 30, you know, because I'm. that's what I'm going to be doing when we hit 30, just squirting out of pure pride in, in us, you know, as a podcast family, a pod fam, as, nope, not going to... Immediately regret saying that. Immediately regret that. Um, what's up? How are you guys doing? I'm uh, I'm doing great, honestly. Right now, I'm in I'm in Hovar, Croatia, which um, we just arrived today, and I gotta say, this is easily the most beautiful place I've ever been in my entire life. I think I can say that confidently. I like the view. I, w- I wish you could see this view that I'm looking at right now, and I know that's a that's a dick move, isn't it? Isn't that a dick move? I. I know that's a joke that I do on my Snapchat or my Instagram or wherever. I'll be like, you know, I wish you could see this sunset that I'm looking at and I'll, it'll be a selfie, right? Ha ha, super funny joke. Do it all the time. It gets funnier the more I do it, actually, in my opinion. But no, I'm not doing that as a joke right now. This view is unfucking believable It's one of those views that you, um, that flatters you, you know? People say uh, that you get flattered by a view that seriously, I one of those views, I open up the curtains and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, like I'm like blushing. It felt like I walked in on, you know, a hot chick and changed or something like, oh my God, so sorry. So sorry. Ah, trying not to look, but you know, it's flattering at the same time. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I feel embarrassed looking at this. I feel like I don't deserve it. It's unfucking believable. And if, I don't know if any of you have been here before, but God damn it. If not, you should come here. You should do it. A little funny story, um, how we got here on the way here. Here's a, here's a, here's a little funny story, a little travel story. You know, like if you fly a lot, you hear these like fucking nightmare stories of people flying on planes or whatever. Weird shit goes down. You know what I mean? Someone has like a heart attack or someone like, I don't know. Someone like takes a shit in the middle of the aisle and you just got to deal with that for the rest of the flight or, you know, I don't know. Or all this shit where it's like, is, it, is, it, is there a doctor on this plane? And somehow there always is. Like, what are the odds that doctors are always on the plane? How many fucking doctors are there in the world? Now, that's the question. That's the question that we should be asking. Anyway, some shit always goes down, right? But, like, I've flown a lot in the past couple of years, and I feel like I have a pretty good track record. Because it's like the odds are not high, obviously, that something like that will happen. But the more you fly, the more you're like, all right, well... I'm due for one. I'm due for one of these weird incidents, you know? I'm due for someone to just drop trout take a shit in the aisle. And for someone to have to deal with that, you know? Or for, like, an old person to die right beside you. And then you're like, you're like, oh, my God, is that person dead? You check their pulse, and then you got to stand up and be like, is there a doctor on this plane? No? Well, good thing, because I'm a doctor. No, nothing like that. It just, you're, you know what I mean? I feel like I'm overdue for one of these and uh, sure enough, fam, God damn it, I did it again. I gotta stop like saying that, saying that ironically because I know I'm just saying it. Anyways, pod fam, so sure enough, last night I was uh, flying here. So basically what we did is we were in, um, I'm gonna go through what we did in the past week because we have crazy fucking week. Absolutely crazy week. But um, we uh, yesterday we flew in, we were in Budapest and we flew into... Um, Munich. It's like the only way I mean, we couldn't get a direct flight to split Croatia. Croatia is like down here. So basically we flew in the opposite direction for two hours to get to Munich just so we could fly two more hours back down to split. So we flew into Munich and we had like a five hour layover or something. So we just like pulled up in the airport and shot the shit, you know, whatever you fucking do in an airport. I basically, I'm working on like new videos. It's been hard for me to like make shit because we've been constantly on the go. So I feel bad I haven't posted a video in a fucking, like, a week and a day now, which is, like, just against my, I'm, like, I always try to put one out once a week, at least. So this is, like, bad for me, but I just, like, I did, I filmed one and I edited it and it just, like, wasn't funny. Um, so I'm, like, I want to, you know, want to make good shit, you know? So um, basically I was just working on writing new content. I have a new video idea that I think is going to be really funny. So we're posted up in the fucking Munich airport for five hours, which is annoying, you know? just spending time in an airport, just, you're just like, it feels like you're fucking wasting time just sitting there listening to the terminal messages, 
you know? Could passenger Johnster Macer please report to gate 69? Or like, you know, final boarding for man, you're for, for Hamburg. And you're like, what the fuck's going to Hamburg? It's actually worse in American airports. You know what I mean? When you're like, it's like, it's like final boarding call for Dayton, Ohio. And you're like, oh man, I would hate to be somebody going to Dayton right now. Ugh. Ugh. Glad I'm not going there. Where in Europe you get to hear cool places, you know? It's like, it's like all boarding for Dubai. And you're like, that's tight. That's super dope. I, you know, have fun, Mr. I don't know, whatever name they said. Well, I'm not going to make up a name there because I feel like I, I <laughs> feel like I would just end up saying something racist or I don't know. So anyways, we're sitting in the airport <laughs> shooting the shit, wasting time. It's like five hours, right? We get on the flight and uh, I sit down beside this just gremlin looking old woman. Ah, just with a face. I would never, okay. I would never hit a woman. <laughs> such a bad, such a bad way to start that out, I realize. Never, never, would never hit a woman. But this, this, and especially never an old woman, ever. No, come on. You can't, you can't hit women, first of all. And an old woman, even if you were to hit a woman, which you shouldn't, and never do that. But if you were... <laughs> Not that you should, again, just want to reiterate that, and I would never do that. But, but, if you were to hit an older woman, <laughs> like a grandma, this is so fucked. This woman had a really punchable face, or I don't know what it was about her. She just had a gremlin looking face, and she kept looking at me in the eyes, and she didn't speak English, and so she would talk to me in German, and she would never smile. You know, people like say stuff in another language and they're like, you know, I don't know, like, uh, and you're like, I don't speak Spanish, but, and they smile at you. So, you know, it's like a friendly thing and they kind of go, oh, sorry. And they, they, both parties kind of laugh and they just walk away or you, you don't speak the, you know, whatever foreign language you're, or the language of the town you're in or whatever. If you don't speak it, you'll go up and ask something in English and they'll go, oh, and they'll just kind of shrug and whatever. That's how it works. This lady was like just spitting German at me and then just not smiling. When I said, sorry, I don't know, understand, I don't understand you. So maybe that's kind of the reason why I wanted to punch her. I didn't want to punch her. I didn't want to punch her. I keep saying that, but I didn't want to punch her. She just had a punchable face. Not that I would ever punch a woman but or a grandma. This is just bad. Anyways, you could pretty much picture her at this point. Just weird looking old woman. Didn't really like her. Just gave me a bad vibe, right? Anyways, sit beside her. Um, and so far, so so far, the flight has just not been going well for me. Um Anyways, I put on some music and uh, I start sleeping. We take off and about 40 minutes into the flight. Now, keep in mind, it's a, this flight's about an hour and a half long. So about 40 minutes into the flight, I feel something. And I don't really know what it was. And I think I heard something too, but I was blasting, you know, Linkin Park. Um, <laughs> In the end, it doesn't even matter. No, I wasn't blasting Linkin Park. Just choking. I would never do that. I was uh, blasting the Fifty Shades of Grey audiobook, right? So I wasn't really hearing anything. And uh, anyways, just like didn't really think anything of it, right? You always like, especially for me, I don't like flying. And if you don't like flying, you'll probably be the same way. You just convince yourself that you're hearing and seeing shit all the time. That's not really there. Or it's just natural shit the plane's doing. About... 15 minutes later, the captain comes on and goes, uh, hey, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just want to let you know our plane was hit by lightning. And uh, everything's working fine. Actually, no, first, first the pilot comes on and just... <laughs> Actually, this is kind of funny. First the pilot comes on and just talks in German for like five minutes. And everyone on the plane, which is like the majority of people spoke German, and they all were like looking at each other like really worried. And as a person who doesn't speak German, who hates flying, I'm sitting there like, what, what the fuck's happening? What, what's happening? What, what the fuck's going on? And so I asked one of the chicks after the pilot finished, because then the pilot finishes his message and everyone goes, well, everyone goes, oh, and some people look really scared and other people were just like frustrated. And so I was just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? I was just, I was busy listening to 50 Shades of Grey audiobook. You know, I was into the, I was into that, you know, I was super Went from being turned on and horny all of a sudden now to being going like, what the fuck's happening? So I asked the girl beside me and she goes, um, 
She goes, oh, we got hit by lightning. We, we have to go back to Munich. And then the churn of, and I was like, what, what? And the pilot comes on. She goes, ladies and gentlemen, plane got hit by lightning. Um, we have to unfortunately turn around to go back to Munich, even though we're over halfway to split um, because Munich is the only place where they can do maintenance on the plane after we land, which makes sense. But it's just fucking like, first of all, it's frustrating as hell. You're over halfway there. Everyone was just like, can we just keep going? It's right there. I can fucking see it. Come on. Come on. Right? I'll give you a couple euro. Just fucking just take us there. Drop us off and then fly back. So we're over halfway and the plane starts turning back. And at this point, it's like, okay, she said the systems were all working. But it's like, what does that mean? You know, I'm not the, I, there might be some weird crack in the wing or something, you know? The guy beside me said he actually saw it hit the wing. How fucking crazy is that shit? And he was doing the thing, this thing, the Catholic thing, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and amen, all that shit. He was doing that. He was looking out the window, doing that. So I'm looking at him, being like, what do, what are, I just was just into it, you know, Christian Grey was just laying pipe on this chick, and all of a sudden, our plane got hit by lightning, this guy's doing the Catholic thing, the triangle thing, praying in his head. And I'm freaking out because now we got like a 45 minute plane ride back to Munich where I just got to think about how the plane could, how the wing could just break the fuck off at any second. You know, like there could be some weird hairline crack and you hit the right bump and the wing just (laughs) falls off and you just fall to your fucking death. And I don't want to die listening to Fifty Shades of Grey. You know, I'd rather die listening to something. uh, Actually, no, that would be a good book. First of all, I'm joking, I wasn't listening to Fifty Shades of Grey on an audiobook, okay? I was listening to the sequel. Um, but second of all, you wanna listen, You want. I feel like you wanna be listening to something a little bit more, I don't know, like, I don't know, like Edgar Allan Poe or something. Edgar Allan Pope. I don't know which one of those two it is. Clearly, I haven't read that. Um, okay, and, well, what the fuck was I even, yeah, so there's a, there's a funny thing. So then, we had to fly back to Munich, we get there, we land safely, luckily, um, as you can probably tell. Um, and uh, the we got to sit in the airport for 40 minutes to figure out what the fuck is happening with our flight. They finally comp us a hotel and a taxi ride to the hotel and back the next morning because they rescheduled our flight for the morning. But the hotel was half an hour away. So by the time we get back to the hotel in Munich, it's midnight already. And we, this has been like an entire day just of traveling when really like we were never that far from Croatia in the first place. Crazy, right? Crazy. Just me complaining about fucking traveling again. No, so that was a, just was a crazy day yesterday. I don't know. I've never had like a weird scare like that on a, on a, on a flight for a long time. And we were flying through a thunderstorm too when we got hit by lightning. So it was just like bumpy as fuck, like really turbulent. And I haven't had a flight like that in a while either where you're just like, like people are like grabbing the rails and everyone's kind of like like looking around to see if everyone else is freaking out, you know? And then you look at the flight attendants because if they're freaking out, you know you're fucked. You know that's some bad shit. You know the wings is about to break off and you're going to fall to your death listening to Fifty Shades of Grey, listening to uh, whatever the guy, what was the guy's name? I just knew it. That's a theme of this podcast is, is uh, me not remembering the fucking names of people and things. I'm going to get a shirt that says, what was the guy's name again? Or what was the name of the thing again? <laughs> that, should I make merch for the for Insanely Chill? Should I make a little podcast merch? Pod merch? Pod fam? I'm going to make a shirt that says pod fam on it. No, I'm not going to do that. But I might make merch. And if you're interested in that, then, then let me know. Uh, by the way, the fucking, my merch, by the way, the I know I started out the last episode of the podcast with an ad for my own merch. So that shirt was only available for two weeks. And uh, and fucking hell, we sold like, I think like 1,700 shirts or something, which is unfucking believable I honestly thought that I'd have trouble selling 100 shirts. So I just want to thank you guys um, if you bought one or, I mean, even if you thought about buying one, even if it crossed your mind and you're like, oh, maybe I'll like wait till Christmas and see if my grandma gives me some money or, you know, something. I don't know. Then, um, or maybe you thought about it, you were like, you know what, I would buy one and I want to support him, but it's a god awful design and and I just don't get the joke. So I'm not going to. I still appreciate the fact that you even, that it even came came across your mind, went across your mind. 
cross the d- cross the dome piece. So I want to thank you guys. Seriously, it means a lot, and it's just like it's really cool that I have a fucking audience that supports me so hard. I really appreciate it. Um, so what else happened this week? We uh, okay. Here's here's okay. So I got to tell you about this fucking um, this festival I went to. Okay, so first of all, I talked last time about the, just like the inefficiencies of Spain, right? And how like a lot of the a lot of what you see there's just lines for everything and everything just seems just generally like slower. People just don't really care as much about like customer service and stuff like that. So I talked a lot about that last time, right? Then I flew to London and I was uh, that's where I recorded the last episode of the podcast. I was in London. And I flew out of, the next day after I recorded it, I flew out of Stansted Airport in London. Stansted. Stansted? Stansted, London. London Stansted. London has like 60 airports. It's fucking crazy. Whenever you like go to Google Flights and you're like, I want to fly to London. They're like, all right, would you like, you know, Stansted or Gatwick or Heathrow or fucking this random one in this city or this crazy one? (laughs) And so I picked Stansted just because it was fucking random and the flight was cheap. Dude, that airport is the most efficient fucking airport I've ever been to in my entire life. I cannot, couldn't believe it. I was so pleasantly surprised by how efficient that airport was. And this is how, I kind of realized this is how I know I'm a fucking, I came to this realization today that like this part of Europe, like um, I don't even know, what, what would you call it? Western Europe, I guess. Like, I complain about the inefficiencies and the slowness, but that's just me being a fucking stupid American. I'm so used to just being babied through shit. Like, this airport, I was so happy because they were just, everything was, like, so streamlined, but it was because they were just telling me what to do. Like, when you go through security, you have to, like, there's, like, it's like a, it's like a, um, what did I, uh, it's like a, God I hate when I do this in the factory, like, a. Fucking, oh my God, I can't even look it up because the internet's so shitty in here. Okay, in the factory, fucking Henry Ford created this goddamn technique of making shit. Holy fuck, I went to like almost an Ivy League school and I can't remember this. I hate, I really do hate myself. Um... Anyway, so you go to this security thing, it's like everyone has to like go to a certain place, take a bin put it on the things and it's like a it's like a giant conveyor belt and so you like as it's moving you put all your shit in the bin it goes through and then you take it immediately and you go over these little like uh fucking stools and shit where you have to like or these little like cubbies where you like put your shit back in your bag so none of that is is none of that th- those inefficiencies happen in the line right so the line moves super quickly and like everything's electronic like the boarding pass scanners and all this stuff and it's because I realized I was so happy with it because first of all, it was fast, right? And you know, you appreciate speed, but it's also just cause it's like, as an American, I realized I like to be like babied through shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everything, I feel like everything in America now is like so well, like the signage is always so good. And like, we all have Google maps and stuff. So we know exactly where things are. Whereas like in, in this, in this part of Europe, like a lot of it is just like, figure it the fuck out. You know, like you go up to people and you'll be like, where's the bus stop? Like, I'm supposed to get my the email says I'm supposed to get picked up at this bus stop, but I don't know where the bus is. And you'll ask people and they'll be like, I don't know. Figure it the fuck out. I just work for this bus stop. You know what I'm saying? I work at this convenience store in the bus stop. Why the fuck would I know where your email says your bus? Just walk around. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like I feel like Americans like. Like Americans in restaurants, for example. I, I won't, if I have to go to the bathroom, I won't stand up. I'll stand up, but I won't leave the table at like by more than two feet if I don't know exactly where the bathroom is, right? I'm not going to wander around the restaurant like a lost child. I'm not going to do that. I feel scared and alone, you know? No, I stand up and I, I wait till a waitress walks by and I go, where are the bathrooms? She points me in the right direction and then I know, right? Because I like to be babied through shit. Whereas in Europe, for example, you walk into a restaurant and you don't even interact with someone. You just sit down at a table and they eventually figure out that you're there because they can figure shit out 
right? They see a new face and they're like, okay, I need to serve this person, right? In America, that does not fly at all. You can't just go into a restaurant and sit down at a table. They'd look at you like you're fucking insane. They'd be like, "You, uh, sir, we haven't put you in the system yet. You can't just sit down at the table. No, 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 sir. No, no, no. We need, a, we need to know that you're here. We need to know how many people you are. Okay, we need to be prepared. You can't just fucking sit down at a table. What are you, a fucking barbarian? No, this is 2017. You can't just do that. There is a procedure here. Sir, and we have a line of people waiting. No, you they, you can't do that, right? But in, in Europe, it's just like, fucking figure it out. Just do it. Fucking figure it. Skip the line. Wait in line. Doesn't matter. Just figure it the fuck out. We're all going to get there. It's kind of funny. And that was exactly our experience in, in Budapest. Um, I flew into Budapest from London. And we spent a night in Budapest. And then basically what we did is we took a bus from Budapest a couple hours to this lake. It's called Lake Belaton. And uh, we were there for a festival called Belaton Sound, which is a is a five-day-long EDM festival um, where it's just, it was fucking crazy. I think, I mean, obviously, I've said this on a previous podcast. I just glossed over the description, five-day EDM description. Basically, don't know how, how I was going to survive. But I don't know how I survived. It was, and... <laughs> If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that I still have the fucking wristbands on. That's not me being a stupid, like, festival rat who just keeps them on afterwards because she wants to fucking hang on to the goddamn memory. This is just because I can't find scissors. (laughs) Nobody has scissors, and I have no idea how to take these things off. I've tried my goddamn nail clippers, but I've just been, like, hacking away at it. Like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I'm using some primitive tool to fucking cut it off and it's just not working basically i would die in the wild in like five seconds if i was ever stranded because i can't take these fucking bracelets off so i just leave them on they look so stupid um so anyways yeah so we take a bus to this place and we get to the bus station and we just can't find the bus we're like where the fuck is the bus and there's like 10 other people in the exact same position. They're all like, I don't know where the bus is and it leaves in 10 minutes. We can't find it. Nobody, no employee here knows where the bus is. So eventually we go underground to like the terminal or whatever. And there's like six places where you can leave the terminal up to the main main floor. So we're just popping up each one looking for a bus that says something about Bellaton sounds or something. Eventually someone's just like, all right, let's just try this one. And we walk like half a kilometer and sure enough, there's a bus there, like, picking up people to go to, you know, people in tank tops. That's how you can tell someone's going to a festival. Everyone's in a fucking tank top. Um, and wearing shitty hats. Basically what I look at, look like right now. Um, and so we finally found it, and we're like, what the, like, there was zero signs, zero anything. And then we get there, and there's already, like, 40 people waiting for this bus. And the guy's just writing names down on paper. And going, all right, just like, you know, keep getting on the bus. People are jamming their luggage in the bus by like on their own. Like, isn't the bus driver supposed to do that shit? Or is that just like, again, am I just a a baby American? Like, I thought you just like give the bus, like he packs it, right? It's like part of his job. I don't, I don't know. People are just like jamming their shit and they're ripping other people's shit out and jamming their own shit in there, which is fucking absurd to me. So eventually the guy's like, yeah, there's like too many people here. They like totally overbooked the bus. And so he's like, there's another one on the way, but it's half an hour away. And it's like 90 degrees out. And somehow Alex, the girl that I was with, is like this super charming Australian girl. So she just fucking Aussied her way up to the front of the line somehow. You know what I mean? Just, just, oh, I might, I reckon, thank you. And just fucking Aussies her way up to the front because everyone's like, oh my God, I love her accent. Great. So we get on like one of the first people and somehow get our bags on, even though we weren't waiting there for like 30 minutes. And I say bad saying that. And I, I told Alex, I was like, I feel bad. These people have been waiting here the whole time. And she's like, she's like, oh, mate, what? You think you're just going to wait here? Huh? No, 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 no. No, we're not losers, mate. No, we're not just going to wait at the back of the line. You got to make shit happen. And I was like, all right, fucking stop screaming at me. Love your accent, by the way. So we made it on the bus and the bus was like a fucking two hour bus to this place. And man, we get there. God, I know I said this was beautiful. And it is. It's it's the most beautiful place I've ever been. But I got to say Lake Belaton is in my top five. It's this. Oh, my God. It's this gigantic lake. It's like turquoise in color. And 
it's super shallow and it, it, I mean, it's deep in the middle of the lake, but the lake is so big that the shallowness goes forever. It's like just like four feet or, you know, two to three to four feet deep for like a hundred yards. And the whole thing is just like the base is just clay. This really soft clay. So you can just fucking wade, you know, you can just wade around for hours in the sun in this fucking lake. And the festival is right on the lake. And it's huge. There's like, I, it, was, it was like eight stages and it was going 24 hours a day for a fucking, for five days. I honestly do, I've never seen a festival like go that hard in my entire life. Dude, Europe fucking goes hard. That's one thing I've realized. And I knew that before, but it's like every time I'm here, it's like, oh my God. Like this club you might go to tonight opens at midnight. And same with the one in Barcelona that we went to. And so I was kind of like, okay, well, that's the reason why this festival goes five days is because our Europe obviously goes harder than the States. Um, but dude, this was another world. Like, okay, here, it. You hear people talk about like being tired after Coachella all the time or like any American festival. I'm sure you've been to one EDC, whatever the fuck you're right. People go to those and they're like, wow, I don't know how to survive that. It's crazy. I danced an hour and a half straight to Dylan Francis's set and I took an Adderall and now I'm just dead and I'm sick because my immune system is so depleted from that hour and a half. I danced. No, 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 dude, this is another fucking ball game. This Go, li, there was a stage that didn't stop playing music for five days straight and there was always people there dude I had I met these two people we met a bunch of friends when we were there like just people that we met that became friends we met these two people there that got pepper sprayed in the mosh pit because I guess that's a thing that people like doing they just like they're like this isn't intense enough like we need to I, I guess it's like a prank or something or it's like a fucked up thing that some fucked up person is doing is that they would bring pepper spray in and just like, and just like exploded on the ground or something. So a bunch of people had to go to like the medical tent. So these two people, my two friends came over and they were like, yeah, we just got pepper sprayed. And it's like the worst pain I've ever been in in my entire life. And we like partied and, and I was like, so you're still, you're good. And they're like, yeah, we went to the medical tent. We're good. And I was like, you're going to party through that. They're like, yeah, 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 we're good. Let's go. We're the fucking drinks. And I was like, oh my God, dude, you just got like, literally, did, you think mosh pits in the States are crazy? People are literally getting tortured in this mosh pit. Pepper spray is like a form of torture. And people are just partying through it. Someone just getting waterboarded in the middle. Just getting their fingernails peeled off, just fucking partying through it. Jesus. I've never seen people party that hard, ever. There was just, oh, for five days straight, we just heard the just pounding of bass. Seriously, my ears are still getting used to like the equilibrium of like not having change, having to change pressure every two seconds from the fucking bass. Like I'm seriously like dizzy right now because of the silence. <laughs> the silence is deafening, I guess you could say. It was nuts, dude. It was fucking nuts. Oh, man. Um, it was weird, though. It was mostly EDM music, but then, like, randomly, like, Jason Derulo would play, which, which, which I found out Europeans love Jason Derulo. They love it. Like, he played, uh, uh, what's that, like, Tra La La La, that song that's, like, I guess, popping or was popping or whatever. Swa La La La, that's what it's called. And people went ape shit. There was, like, 10,000 people watching him that all went fucking ape shit. And I talked to like six people that morning, all Europeans. And I was like, what are you, you know, what are you pumped to see? Or actually they would ask me that because I, I, I never really looked at the lineup. Honestly, I was just like, I'm just going to like fucking just play it by ear and see literally play it by ear. Just see where the night takes me every day. And they all had like a set amount of people they wanted to see. So they'd all ask me, who are you excited to see? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll go with you. Who are you excited to see? And they're all, they were all like, oh, Jason Derulo is playing tonight. Very excited to see him. And I'm like, Jason Derulo? Or they'd always be like, um, well, Armin van Buren is later. Very excited to see him. 
And San, I think Tiesto is playing as well. So I might go see him. And then, ooh, Jason Derulo is playing as well. Very excited to see him. Swa la la la. You gonna come? I'm like, sure. I don't know. I guess. I don't. He's like one of those guys where it's like, one of those guys where you're like, I'm not gonna like actively go see a Jason Derulo concert, but I know if I went, I'd know every song, you know, because he's just been pumping out hits for like 15 years. Like I'm pretty sure every every hot song when I was in college was a Jason Derulo song. So I know I'd end up seeing, loving every song and singing along to every song. But it's like, when they say it, it's like Jason Derulo, really? I don't know about that. But I did. I ended up going to the Jason Derulo concert. And it was fun. It was a good time. All the Europeans loved it. They were turning up. And then like people like G-Eazy would play, which is weird because it was like, it's just like straight EDM music and like house, deep house, whatever genre you want to hear, dubstep, whatever. And then G-Eazy would get on stage and start doing his set. People would just be kind of like, what? It's really weird change in energy. Festivals are fucking weird. But I love them. I think I might do a video about festivals. Little hint. Little hint there. About my next video. God damn, this place is fucking beautiful. It's just, I'm sitting here and I'm missing the sundown, actually. I'm missing the sunset. But I had to record. I had to tell you guys about this. <laughs> I just wish you could fucking see it. <laughs> really do but I'm fucking honestly I'm kind of ready to go home just been non-stop three weeks three and a half weeks now traveling just getting on planes and buses and trains and fucking cabs and figuring out where we're gonna stay and all that stuff and it's just eventually shit takes a toll on you you know I'm ready to go back to LA and just just squirt out some content. No, not do that. I just want to work hard on some fucking content, you know? Three weeks off. I, was, I mean, I wasn't, didn't take it completely off. I've obviously been making a little bit of shit since I've been here, but ready to just go back. The more I, the more, the thing is, the more I travel, like the less I realize that I like enjoy it, I guess. I, maybe it's because I can't, I have a hard time relaxing. Because every time I'm like trying to relax, I'm like, no, you should be doing something. You should be thinking about a new joke or a new con- like bit or like writing something down. And so like, every, that's why every time the, the time spent in airports and all that stuff, it's just, it just feels like a waste of time. It feels like a waste of day. But then you get to a place like this and you're just like, God, it's, it's worth it, you know? But that's what I mean. It's like the more I travel, it's like the less, I guess the less I know how to do it. You know, you think you got it all figured out and then you you run your plane gets hit by fucking lightning. And then you're like, well, maybe I didn't know anything about this. Also, another thing is that fucking I talked a lot last time about people who stop in bad places, right? Just a big pet peeve of mine. This is another thing about this this part of Europe is I think it's it's Maybe that is even, it's, it goes hand in hand maybe with like the laziness, not laziness, but like um, just general relaxedness of like the culture here and stuff like that is I think that, I think bad stopping might go hand in hand with that. Or maybe it's a tourist thing. I don't know, but it's another thing about that line to waiting to get to the bus in Budapest, just people bumping into me bad stoppers and bumpers like that kid that was bumping into my bag I talked about that last time right today we're standing in line on in in the airport in uh in split which is the airport that we flew into and we're standing in line for customs and everyone's everyone's very anxious to get through it's a small room everyone's jammed in there we all just got off the plane so we're standing in line, right? And there's a piece of your brain, I think, when you're when you're waiting in line, that is obviously like you got to get to the front, and if you don't, like someone's gonna steal your place, and you got to keep moving forward and like make sure your place 
You know what I mean? Like you get a little bit of anxiety that you're going to lose your place or someone's going to butt in front of you or something. There's part of your brain. And so you're, you're continually moving forward as much as you can. But for me, there's like the self-awareness where like I'll never touch another person, right? I'll go up to their all the way until like I'm an inch away from their bag and that's that. Like there's still that sense of personal space that trumps that part of my brain that's like you got to get through this fucking line. That doesn't exist for bumpers or bad stoppers. I think, I think those two are the same. I think that's the conclusion I've come across because they're just missing that portion of self-awareness that stops them from bumping into your shit. Their part, the part of their brain that says you got to get to the fucking front trumps their, any sense of personal space they have. So that every time they just bump into your bag, right? Because they're inching forward a little bit too far and you're like, can you not fucking touch my bag? Just stop bumping into me. Stop fucking bumping into me. And then you're walking. We literally, we made it through the line and we're walking through baggage claim and someone just takes, is like wheeling around one of those gigantic things that like wheels suitcases around and they just let it go and just coast off without even looking behind them. And there was like 20 people and I was in the very front that just stopped for like this. And I just started laughing because I was like, are you, are you like, are you serious? I looked behind me and everyone was like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, what is this guy doing? And I'm like, I'm like, I know. And they're like, no, we're talking to you. Why are you just standing there? Just move the thing. Why are you freaking out about this bad stopper? And I'm like, because he's a bad stopper. Don't fucking stop there. It's a bad place to stop. Don't fucking stop there. Don't leave your thing there because it's a bad place to stop. Look behind you. There's 20 people. Don't leave your fucking thing there. It's a bad place to stop. Don't stop there. Don't fucking stop there. Just have the self-awareness to at least look behind you. I couldn't fucking believe it. I started laughing and I stopped. Someone bumped into me. And oh God, it's a bad place to stop. Don't stop there. Don't fucking bump into me. You're going to get through after I move the thing. I, stop touching my fucking bag. <laughs> bad stoppers and bumpers, dude. Don't be a BB. Don't be a BB. And if you see one, it's, it's tell them. Bad place to stop, don't stop there. Just say that. Even if it's under your breath. Say, don't be a BB. BB, don't bump me. Bad place to stop, don't stop there. Don't fucking bump me. Bad place to stop, don't stop there. Don't be a BB. People, don't be a BB. Don't be B. Don't be a BB. Anyways, guys, I think today might be a short one because uh, honestly, I want to go out and have a, I want to go out and have an Aperol spritz. Do you know what this drink is? If you're European and you're listening to this, you definitely know what it is. I just found out what it was while we were at the festival. I go to meet my friend Alex and I'm like, what are you having? She was drinking this drink and it looked just, it just looked very compelling. Some sort of some sort of clearish reddish color with with slices of oranges in there. And I was like, wow, that looks A, refreshing, B, very compelling, and C, I'm very compelled by that. And C, I'm a little bit enthralled. And and D, or whatever letter I was on, I'm curious as to know, as to know what drink that is. That probably isn't a sentence. <laughs> I'm curious, right? Because it looked, I was very intrigued by it um and so and she goes well i'm glad you asked and i'm glad you're intrigued by it because it's very delicious it's called an aperol spritz and i was like app what did you say aderol spritz because that sounds awesome and she's like no it's an aperol spritz and i was like apple all splits is that it's sort of apple flavored you know aperol splits i was like aperol that sounds like a cleaning fluid that's what that sounds it sounds like i clean my sink with aperol 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 Budapest number one toilet cleaner. No, alas, it was not. It's apparently a liqueur that is, I guess, similar to Campari. And I don't know if you've never had that, but it's like, I love, my Negroni is my favorite drink in the entire world, which is gin, Campari, and soda, I think. Garnished with an orange slice. Is that what it is? Maybe one more thing in there. Um, maybe like vermouth. But Campari is very bitter liqueur. It's like It's like a... Syrupy, really bitter liqueur. Kind of tastes like cough syrup a little bit, but it's like once you once you like it, it's the best. 
So I, like I had a few and I just I like I like bitter weird shit like that. And so like Aperol kind of tastes the same. It kind of tastes like a cleaning fluid, honestly. It tastes like something you'd clean your toilet with. Aperol. And uh, so you mix it with like just club soda and I guess like some lime or something. You put a couple orange slices in there and it's just the best summer drink. I'll tell you what. And so right now I'm jonesing for one. I'm just jonesing for an Aperol split. Uh, sp- spritz. That's what a spritz. Sorry, not an Aperol split. Eat it with fucking ice cream and a banana. No. No. No, I want a nice reddish, topish, movish perhaps summer drink. Well, I enjoy the sunset, and so I'm going to go. I'm going to go. But today's episode was fun. I'm glad I did it. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed it. Guys, uh, again, if you like this podcast, um, go ahead and donate to it on Patreon. I would really appreciate it. It's patreon.com slash Cody Co. And I hope you liked hearing about my travels. Um, We'll be back to normal scheduling next week. I'll get started on the weekend edition again. Let me know who you want on the weekend edition, actually. next I'm going to do one as soon as I get back. Because I'm back on Friday. So let me know. So I'm going to start doing those again. And, uh, you know, back to sweating in my kitchen, recording, instead of just sweating abroad. (laughs) That's what this podcast has been for the past two weeks. Sweating abroad. Idiot. Idiot with blonde hair. Idiot with fucking two-inch roots. You should see my hair right now. It's awful. I'm dying it back as soon as I get back. Idiot with giant roots sweats abroad. <laughs> That's the description of this podcast. <sighs> uh, follow me on Instagram, guys. It's at Cody Co. Um, and uh, what else? Book me on Cameo. Book Cameo.com slash Cody Co. And just keep it real, you know? Keep it real. And I hope you have a good rest of the week. But, you know, just keep in mind it is only Wednesday. So hang in there, you know? Stay on your grind. All right, guys. I love you. Uh, I don't know, do I? <laughs>